Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. As children, we are fearless, bold, and full of innocence and wonder, but our imaginations often get the best of us. We are told that there are no such things as monsters, ghouls, goblins, and phantoms in the night. We are told stories of creatures that go bump in the darkness around a fading campfire, making it hard to sleep a wink afterwards, despite how snug and warm we are in the companies of friends and family. But sometimes these tales surface and are reawakened through memory and experience. This series is dedicated to one of my most enjoyable and memorable readings as a child. I'd like to think that this book sparked my interest, my love for horror. This is Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, collected and written by Alvin Schwartz, narrated by yours truly, The Grim Sleeper. Story 1. The Thing Ted Martin and Sam Miller were good friends. They spent a lot of time together, and on this particular night, they were sitting on a fence near a post office, talking about one thing and another. There was a field of turnips across the road. Suddenly, they saw something crawl out of the field and stand up. It looked like a man, but in the dark it was hard to tell for sure. Then it was gone. But soon it appeared again. It walked halfway across the road, then it turned around and went back into the field. Then it came out a third time and started toward them. By now Ted and Sam were definitely scared and they started running. But when they finally stopped, they decided they were being foolish. They weren't sure what had scared them, so they decided to go back and get a better look. Pretty soon they saw it was coming to meet them. It was wearing black pants, a white shirt, and black suspenders. Sam said, I'm gonna try and touch it. Then we'll know if it's real. He walked up to it and peered into its face. It had bright, penetrating eyes sunken deep into its head. It looked almost like a skeleton. Ted took one look and screamed, and again he and Sam ran, but this time the skeleton followed them. When they got to Ted's house, they stood in the doorway and watched it. It stayed out in the road for a while, and then it disappeared. A year later, Ted got sick and died. Toward the end, Sam sat up with him every night. The night Ted died, Sam swore that he looked like a skeleton. Story 2. Cold as Clay a farmer had a daughter for whom he cared more than anything on earth. She fell in love with a farmhand named Jim, but the farmer did not think Jim was good enough for his daughter. To keep them apart, he sent her to live with her uncle on the other side of the county. Soon after she left, Jim got sick and he wasted away and died. Everyone said he died of a broken heart. The farmer felt so guilty about Jim's death he could not tell his daughter what had happened. She continued to think about Jim and the life they might have had together. One night, many weeks later, there was a knock on her uncle's door. When the girl opened the door, Jim was standing there. Your father asked me to get you, he said. I came on his best horse. Is there anything wrong, she said. I don't know. She packed a few things and they left. She rode behind him, clinging to his waist. Soon, he complained of a headache. It aches something terrible, he told her. She put her hand on his forehead. Why, you, you are as cold as clay, she said. I hope you are not ill, and she wrapped her handkerchief around his head. They traveled so swiftly that in a few hours they reached the farm. The girl quickly dismounted and knocked on the door. Her father was so startled to see her though. Didn't you send for me? She asked. No, no, I didn't, he said. She turned to Jim, but he was gone and so was the horse. They went to the stable to look for them. The horse was there. It was covered with sweat and trembling with fear, but there was no sign of Jim. Terrified, her father told her the truth about Jim's death. Then quickly he went to see Jim's parents. They decided to open his grave. 
The corpse was there in its coffin, but around its head, they found the girl's handkerchief. Story 3 The White Wolf The timber wolves around French Creek had gotten out of hand. There were so many wolves, the farmers could not stop them from killing their cattle and sheep. So, the state put out a bounty on them. It would pay a hunter $10 for every wolf pelt he turned in. A butcher in town named Billy Williams thought that was pretty good money. He stopped working as a butcher and started killing wolves. And he was good at it. Every year he killed over 500 of them. That came to more than $5,000. It was quite a bit of money in those days. After four or five years, Billy had killed so many wolves, there were hardly any left in that area, so he retired and he vowed never to harm another wolf because wolves have made him rich. Then one day, a farmer recorded that a white wolf had killed two of his sheep. He had shot at it and hit it, but the bullets didn't have any effect. Soon that wolf was seen all over the countryside, killing and running, but nobody could stop it. One night, it came into Billy's yard and killed his pet cow. Billy never forgot about his decision never to harm another wolf. He went into town the next morning and bought a young lamb for bait. He took it out to the hills and tied it to a tree. Then he backed off about 50 yards and sat down under another tree. With his gun in his lap, he waited. When Billy didn't come back, his friends started looking for him. Finally, they found the lamb. It was still tied to the tree. It was hungry, but it was alive. Then they found Bill. He was still sitting against the other tree, but he was dead. His throat had been torn open, but there was no sign of struggle. His gun hadn't been fired, and there were no tracks in the soil around him. As far as the white wolf, it was never seen again. Story 4 The Haunted House One time a preacher went to see if he could put a haunt to rest at a house in his settlement. The house had been haunted for about 10 years. Several people had tried to stay there all night, but they would always get scared out by the haunt. So this preacher took his Bible and went to the house, went on in, built himself a good fire, and lit a lamp. Then, just before midnight, he heard something start up in the cellar, walking back and forth, back and forth. Then it sounded like someone was trying to scream and got choked off. Then there was a lot of thrashing around and struggling, and finally, everything got quiet. The old preacher took up his Bible again, but before he could start reading, he heard footsteps coming up the cellar stairs. He sat watching the door to the cellar, and the footsteps kept coming closer and closer. He saw the doorknob began to turn, and when the cellar door began to open, he jumped up and hollered, What do you want? The door shut back easy like, and there wasn't another sound. The preacher was trembling a little, but he finally opened his Bible and read a while. Then he got up and laid the book on the chair, and went back to mending the fire. Then the haunt started walking again and up the cellar stairs. The old preacher sat watching the door, saw the door turn and the door open. It looked like a young woman. He backed up and said, Who are you? What do you want? The haunt sort of swayed like she didn't know what to do. Then she just faded out. The old preacher waited, waited, and when he didn't hear any more noises, he went over and shut the door. But he was a brave man, and he thought he'd be able to see it through. So he turned his chair to where he could watch, and he sat down and waited. It wasn't long before he heard the haunt start up again. And closer, it was right at the door. The preacher stood up and held his Bible up before him. The knob slowly turned and the door opened wide. 
This time the preacher spoke quiet like he said in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, who are you and what do you want? The haunt came right across the room straight to him and took hold of his coat. It was a young woman about 20 years old. Her hair was torn and tangled and the flesh was dropping off her face so you could see the bones and part of her teeth. She had no eyeballs but there was a sort of blue light way back in her eye sockets and she had no nose to her face either. Then she started talking. It sounded like her voice was coming and going with the wind blowing. She told how her lover had killed her for her money and buried her in the cellar. She said if the preacher would dig up her bones and bury her properly, she could rest. Then she told him to take the end joint of a little finger from her left hand and to lay it in the collection plate at the next church meeting, and he'd find out who had murdered her. And she said, If you come back here once more after that, you'll hear my voice at midnight, and I'll tell you where my money is hid, and you can give it to the church. The haunt sobbed like she was tired, and she sunk down to the floor and was gone. The preacher found her bones and buried them in the graveyard. The next Sunday, the preacher put the finger bone in the collection plate, and when a certain man happened to touch it, it stuck to his hand. The man jumped up and rubbed and scraped and tore at that bone, trying to get it off. Then he went to screaming like he was going crazy. Well, he confessed to the murder and they took him to jail. After the man was hung, the preacher went back to the house one midnight and the haunt's voice told him to dig under the hearth rock. He did, and he found a big sack of money. And where the haunt had held on to his coat, the print of those bony fingers was burned right into the cloth. It never did come out. Story 5 The Guests a young man and his wife were on a trip to visit his mother. Usually, they arrived in time for supper, but they had gotten a late start and now it was getting dark, so they decided to look for a place to stay overnight and go in the morning. Just off the road, they saw a small house in the woods. Maybe they rent rooms, the wife said, so they stopped to ask. An elderly man and woman came to the door. They said that they didn't rent rooms, but they would be glad to have them stay overnight as their guests. They had plenty of room and they would enjoy the company. The old woman made coffee and brought out some cake and the four of them talked for a while. Then the young couple were taken to their room. They again explained that they wanted to pay for this, but the old man said he would not accept any money. The young couple got up early in the morning before their host had awakened. On a table near the front door, they left an envelope with some money in it for the room. Then they went on to the next town. They stopped in a restaurant and had breakfast. When they told the owner where they had stayed, he was shocked. That, that can't be, he said. That house burned to the ground and the man and the woman who lived there died in the fire. The young couple could not believe it. So they went back to the house, only now there was no house. All they found was a burned out shell. They stood staring at the ruins, trying to understand what had happened. Then the woman screamed. In the rubble, there was a badly burned table, like the one they had seen by the front door. On the table was an envelope they had left that morning. <laughs> 